Live on WFLA Now, this is Run for Fun with running enthusiast Lee Spann. All right, let's go. Welcome back to the Stream Center for this week's episode of Run for Fun. The show focuses on ways to help you enjoy the sport of distance running. Because believe it or not, it's not all smiling pictures of you holding up a medal. And if you, uh, there's many, many, many hours of hard work that go into those moments. And if you don't enjoy the time it takes to reach those goals, you won't stick with it. So I'm your host, Lee Spann. I'm a meteorologist at WFLA in Tampa, but I've been running pretty consistently since about 2010, and it has brought me so many moments of joy. I continue to learn ways to make this sport more enjoyable and more a healthy part of my life, and I'm excited that I get to share all the things I learn with everyone out there. Of course, who is teaching me on a literal daily basis is my coach, Coach Maria. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, Lee. Did you have a good weekend? I did, actually. I got to have lunch with my mom on Mother's Day. That's a treat, and I'm sure she loved it. Yes, we we all wore blue. Her, my dad, and me all showed up in, like, the exact same color. Oh, wow, that's (laughs) funny. So we looked very very funny at the the restaurant. Were you taking good care of on Mother's Day? Yes, of course. My son was home, actually. He's home for a month, so that's a pretty big treat for any mama to have somebody home. Yes, that was... The, uh, I, I'm sure that made you very, very happy. I'm glad to hear yes. it. Uh, so now that Mother's Day has come and gone, that means that Juicy June. It's is Juicy June, baby. Coming up. Boy, it's about that... to be. And with that with that humidity out there this Ooh. past week, it's been pretty brutal. I mean, the amount of complaints <laughs> I've gotten on Final Surge <laughs> is Hand topping <laughs> all-time records just because it seems to be hap- happening a little earlier than usual, no? We just didn't. We actually had a relatively mild winter. So we're, yeah. I mean, there are times last winter when it felt humid like this multiple times. And then, th- so this just went from being relatively comfortable to extremely uncomfortable and our bodies are in no way used to it. Even yeah, though I, I mean, had, it a, wasn't gradual. No, even though I had my own fit on, on Bay Shore, my own real temper tantrum about the heat. I know that it's, I know that it's science. I know that it's humidity. And yet it's still mm-hmm. frustrating. You know, it's still frustrating. Yeah, it is. And I think this time of year, we know that it's going to be bad and we know how long it's going to be bad. So it's like, <laughs> that's when the temper tantrums happen. We're like, wait a second. Good. But then really around July, people stop complaining. Yep. They're like, okay, uncle, there's nothing I can do about this. So uh... <laughs> so we're, we're going to try to get people acclimated to it. So I was bringing this up. This is yes. our Strava group. So Strava helps track your runs, things like that. You just carry your phone. It's a free app. And if you go to the groups and the and the um, uh, clubs, I think it's one of the clubs and groups, you'll find the WFLA Run for Fun. And 291 people have joined our Run for Fun group. And uh, we got a Juicy June challenge for them. We do. I am going to set a challenge, and I'll put it um, on the Strava group today. Um, we're going to start in June, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a challenge because it's a lot of miles. But... Uh, we're going to do 200 miles in June. So walking, um, yeah, you can walk, you can run, you can uh, cycle, mm-hmm. but it has to be on Strava. So whatever you're doing to get those miles, I don't care, um, but log them on Strava and let's see how, because we got to acclimate to this weather and we got to, you know, we got to get out there to do it. So give yourself a goal, hit 200 miles in June. And if you guys do it, maybe we'll come up with something for July to keep us motivated too. But uh, please, please try to do miles down, do some cross training, get on your bike if you just can't, if you just can't hack it, because that's still aerobic capacity and try to make this fun. Yeah. 200 juicy June miles. We are going to start and on. They June will be 1st. juicy. Ooh, yes, they <laughs> will. And then we'll go right on through uh, June 30th. So it Start making your calendar now for what you're uh, for. Uh, I'm glad you said that because I was about to be like 30 days, has September, April, 30. June. Yeah, no. it's 30. It's 30. It's definitely 30. It's 30. Uh, <laughs> and you mentioned cycling. So if you see it, our topic for the day is hand cycle and wheelchair racing. Um, a lot of times you may see uh, these hand cyclists or, or the, or the uh, wheelchair racers at, um, at many races. And, and they've put all the time and effort into training for that and crossing that finish line. So joining us is Mark Lolly, uh, a veteran who just completed the Boston Marathon in the hand cyclist division. So first of all, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then um, and how you became a hand cyclist? 
Uh, yes, ma'am. I um, I joined the army after nine eleven. Uh, did my boot camp and went to um, job school as a Black Hawk helicopter mechanic. Uh, when we got orders to go to Iraq, I was pretty much crew chief, where I'd be um, not only maintaining the aircraft, but also serving as door gunner on the aircraft for missions. After Iraq, I was stationed in Italy, where I um, served as a uh, served there. Then. Um, was actually wounded and paralyzed with a traumatic brain injury on a helicopter crash uh, 16 years ago. And uh, since then, after about two years in the hospital at the VA in Tampa, I kind of bumped around and um, got involved in the horse farm, which helped me find new, new precautionary outlets. And with the horse farm, I met my wife, and we have um, we have two twin we have twin daughters. I'm um, just celebrating six birthday this past weekend, and we have a three and a half year old son. And uh, during the pandemic, I got have been involved in drinking, and I knew that wasn't the best example except for my children. So after becoming sober, I turned to the hands of the bike. That has been my outlet since that biking and fitness in the gym has been my escape from, from uh, keeps the crazies away, as I like to say. <laughs> uh, that's so, yeah, that's what? so um, that happens a lot with veterans. Have you um, what was the catalyst that and and how did you find the people to help you with hand cycling? Because I know that's not something that's very readily available. Correct. Uh, I was actually I was. Um, Right, right after I first started, I got, got a cycling. I was, I saw, I did a few, a couple of 10 mile rides and thought, yeah, this is pretty cool. But then I, uh, got, I'm involved with the Wind of Water Project and we have a, um, a big, um, program called Soldier Ride where we meet up with a group of maybe anywhere from 10 to 30 cyclists and veterans we all get together. We ride bikes in, in, during the morning or in the afternoon and then we do, um, uh, other activities along with the cycling like when we did the uh the tampa ride we did uh go yoga one day and then rode our bikes in the afternoon the next day we rode our bikes in the morning and then did an escape room in the afternoon just uh great team building activities and great uh, time to be with your other vets and other, other people in similar situations yeah what a, what a gift that is and um so once you, well, first of all, I also want to say the the, the reason uh, Mark is even on the show today is because apparently I met him a long <laughs> time ago. So tell us, so uh, it was back in the, the Lightning, we're in the Eastern Conference Finals, right? So let's talk a little bit about this. Because when you sent me the email, I was like, this is great. You're ha you're, you're coming on my show. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Um, we actually, it was the uh, 2018 uh, Eastern Conference Finals between the, against the Capitals. My wife was... Do any day with our twins, and uh, when we saw you guys at the front of the stadium, we saw my wife and then she made sure it was twins, and, and everybody from the morning crew came up. Twins! Oh my gosh! Twins! And, it was uh, she was very close to having those twins. <laughs> yeah, she, she wound up having them like a week later. So it was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was one of the magical times. Yeah, so I was glad that you reached out because, um, you know, first of all, going twenty six point two miles you know, is, is difficult on your feet. Can you tell us a little bit about the training to, to be able to make your arms and how to, how that, the, the cycle actually works? So, um, with my cycle, I'm pretty much laying flat on the ground. I may be pretty much off the ground as a ride. And then the, uh, the wheels go, um, arms move, uh, uh, in unison as you as you cycle to go to push the wheel forward and uh, it's it's similar to using your legs but just using your upper body strength and that's it can be taxing can be tiring but you know just is that scary to be in that position like on your back like that i, I do you do you cycle on the road or do you do mostly trails oh i i very 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 rarely will I cycle on the road yeah. okay um, I do. I'm mostly at Flatwoods Park. That's my my backyard, my hometown uh, training spot. There, it's quiet. Nobody bothering me there. Um, I 
have only written around my neighborhood on a couple times because I'm so low, because I'm so hard to see. I do have a safety flag, but it's not really, I, I, I don't trust the drivers around me. Too yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. So what's it like in a race then? I mean, cause you're, you're at people sort of, you know, below their knee, right? When they run past you. Yes, ma'am. Um, with races, both um, at um, at Boston and then uh, through your run Disney races, so through some of the other races I've done, we usually start before the runners do. So that we're, we're, out, we're clear and we're usually finishing both before the runners also, just to keep us clear of them and clear of us, just that way there's no um, malfunctions and nobody clanking into each other. So do you start So before, when so you, when you, sorry, Lee, okay. when you, um, first start, because this is so interesting to me, how far could you go hand cycling? Like, uh, is it the same as running or did, could you go a little further? I, I it's, it's been, I, the last time I ran was, was literally the day before I crashed. Um, so I, I, I was never a fan of running when I could. <laughs> I remember, I remember getting to that run at the end of the end of training for the army said, man, I hate running. I never want to run again. <laughs> And it kind of bit me at about 26 hours later. Like, oh, so, no. Yeah. Be careful, that's a tough be, careful, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, um, but honestly, it's um. now I would love to be able to do it. Like, I, I love the endurance sports because it's, it, you have to clear your mind to get out there and to, to do everything to push yourself, to push your body, to push your, push your mind. And that's been a big, um, it's been a big part of the therapy for that. Now, do you have to lift weights on your arms and stuff to get them strong enough to do it? Or do you, do you just hand cycle? I, I, I do. I lift weights. I work out at a gym, um, three times a week at least. Um, and that's mostly for endurance, um, mm -hmm. not so much for, for strength gain and muscle, muscle building, but just for endurance and things like that. Um, but that's also just another sense of mental health and those, I love being at the gym. I love that call. I love the, um, the buddies I have there and the trainer work with I've worked with her for uh, almost 10 years now. It's just been been a lot of um a lot of gains both physically and mentally. It's just been a great atmosphere. So Amazing. You're you're saying that even you know when you're training, obviously you have to get that cycle out to Flatwoods. So yes, ma'am. So you know not only talk about how to move it or how to get it around and and while you're in locally, but then how do you get to Boston with your bike? So that that was an experience. Um, I actually had a case. It looks like a a giant uh, rock and roll band. Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> Party on! <laughs> but the bike in that had shipped that up through UPS, and then uh, I was very very um, nervous for the. Two weeks it took me to get to ship it up box up and ship it to the uh, actually unloading it at the hotel thinking, okay, you're gonna be sorry, proof of life. Mm -hmm. And then um just you know, gonna make sure the gear still work, make sure everything is still as advertised, and then then ultimately shipping it down after the race was also didn't have didn't have tracking on it for a few days, so it's kinda of like, Hey, we're here dropping off your bike, I'm like, okay. But it was um it, it wound up working out well. Um so yeah, just had to make sure trust things to be stronger than you thought it would be. So just uh, and how did you train for those hills in Florida? Because those hills in Boston are very hard. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, although downhill is fun. Yes, I can downhill, imagine. <laughs> downhill is great. I think I, I think my speedometer said hit uh, thirty seven miles an hour going down the hills. Wow. It was amazing. Wow. wow. But, that's uh, scary though. That's sometimes but, scary. I mean, sh I'm sure not scary for what you've done in your life, but for the regular person, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it is, it's, it's an adventure, that's an adventure. So, um, but, uh, but, you know, one of the, one of the pieces of advice I got from one of my friends at, with, with one of the water party was, uh, to ride with it, with a break on. Kind of park, block the parking brake and then ride up hills, put on the hardest gear, and try to push stuff as hard as you can to get a full training. Okay. It, okay. That would make it, sense. It helped. It helped. But, you know, it's nothing can compare. I do have uh, a Zwift in the garage, but uh, 
we're redoing our pool. So all of our pool equipment, pet air furniture is in the room in the garage. So mm -hmm. the pain cave is kind of uh, not, not existent right now. So once I can get that back up, I can work on hills more, but it's. So we'll get do, you, do you have any interest in doing a marathon distance again? Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, I'm, he caught the bug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually doing the, uh, the Marine Corps marathon uh, in October on my birthday. So that'd be fun. Oh, that's amazing. And I'm competing in the uh, Veterans Military Games in July. So I'm not sure. Oh, neat. This is that race, but. Uh, uh, well, well, Marine Corps has a lot of big hills too. Yes, they do. Um, start, start and finish at uh, Arlington Cemetery. So that'd be, uh, you know, getting up the hill for, at the end yeah. of the race and stuff. But, uh, Mark, do you find that when um, in these races that um, the other hand cyclists, are they mostly veterans or is it a combination? It's it's combination, but uh, a lot of us are vets, um, and a lot of the the push room athletes are or wheelchair athletes are also vets, and and a lot of similar stories, a lot of uh, war injuries, a lot of training accidents, just uh, it's been a a big catharsis for all of us to be out physical again and to be out um, racing and active again, competing. That's been the best for all of us. And I um I was reading up for the Boston you know, the Boston Marathon, the the hand cyclist, you, do you have to, just like for the Paralympics, like the the stipulations are the same. So you have to be able to, you have to meet certain qualifications to be even able to be in the hand cyclist where you, you can't have a prosthetic, you can't be able to run on a prosthetic, you can't be able to use a regular wheelchair, correct? Yes, no, correct. So oh, what wow. is the, what is the stipulation? Um. I think it varies. I know, I'm sure, I know um, some of the things off the top of my head. I, if you're an amputee or if you're, um, what qualifies me is with my head injury, I have a lot of the steeper issues, but I also have um, leg length discrepancy. When I crash, my pelvis broke where my right leg is about two inches shorter than my left leg. So I can't run for that. For that. I can't run for multiple reasons, but that's one reason why they feel like I can't be capable on my feet, so I qualify for them for both wheelchair and for their hand cycling. So, well, we're lucky to still have you here. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for your service. Yes, it's a pleasure. <laughs> I'm sure that your family is very happy that you are still here as well. In fact, I think I have a picture of you and your wife right after the the marathon. Yeah. Aww, Look at that I'm big smile. You. It was it was the first time she got to see me race too, so that was she got to see me at the uh, last mile, which was I wasn't going very fast at the time, but she got to see me. <laughs> the um yeah, it's because I, I think that some of those hand, some of the hand cyclists were still coming in, like when the uh, when the winners were coming were were crossing the finish line, correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. The uh, the first place man um, or first place male athlete finished uh, maybe. Two or three minutes after I did, so it was right. He's right. Oh after. wow! And can you see much that's happening around you when you're cycling, or or do you have to like, you know, focus, pay attention? You you can, but um, I, I I don't know, I'm sure I know other guys that are with say that when they're at say Disney or even Boston or New York, they oh yeah, I see I see this I saw this one girl. I was focused on it in front of me. I was focused yeah. on the world in front of me that's all just focus on that and that's uh have you is, ever how easy is it to go side to side like yeah. can, can you is it i i don't know anything about hand cycling so it's, you got to kind of teach me it, it's it's like turning a, um a freight ship oh gosh so it's not easy <laughs> no <laughs> um the, the turn rate is on my bike is maybe it, it's it's enough uh now, on the wheelchair, you can spin on, on a dime, but uh, with the front wheel, it's it's a lot tougher. So it's wow. So do you turn. see you see a turn coming down the way, and you already sort of start a a, a slow tr tangent, I guess. Yes, ma'am. That's uh, I when I race, I'll, I'll look up the uh, the race maps beforehand, and then I'll oscillate. It's like okay, and I have a turn coming up at mile thirteen, and I've got a turn coming up at mile eighteen. So I just, do you have an odometer on there to see where you are? I do. I, I have a, a Zwift computer on my bike, so I can see, or a Wahoo computer on my bike, so I can see the uh, road. I can see how fast I'm going, my RPMs, and how fast I'm sure that day. 
Now that just seemed, wow. we were talking about this before the show, all of that seems very expensive. Like the, you know, you got a computer, yeah. you got a hand cycle cart, cart. So, uh, you know, how, how did you, how did you get into getting all the equipment? I, I, I joke and say that my, my bike budget has replaced my whiskey budget. So it's, not, <laughs> it's a healthier it's budget, just, but it's still a high one, right? Yes, it, it is. But at least I can buy, you know, one bike lasts me a good long time, whereas a bottle of whiskey would maybe last me a few days. So it's, it's a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot more better return on investments. Do you, um, so when you go to these multi-day events with other veterans, uh, you know, what does that do for your mental health, for your camaraderie? How important is that for you to continue to do? That, that, that's very important because we, at those events, we can, uh, send soft stories and it's not so much just war stories of, well, this one time in fact I did this, it's more of a, um, expansion of, you know, this therapy helped me here. This, or this medication helped me with this process or this trying this therapy with my uh, psychologist help with this issues. Or, well, you know what, that didn't really work for me, but this worked for me. We can share stuff. We can, we can bond through that. We can bond through the shared uh, experiences of both su successes and failures. And so it's been, um, been a big help there. That's amazing. People, people don't realize how much endurance sports helps mental, mental illness and mental ability at all. Like it's, there's so many people that have been through really hard things and, um, addictions, and it's very, very common for people to go towards endurance sports, even for like, um, you know, abuse as children, we <laughs> endurance sports just kind of put you in a better state of mind. It's probably the endorphins, it's a little <laughs> chemical, but it's also the, the challenge of being able to, you know, still do things. And a lot of yes, time in your own true. head. Yeah. And especially if you're in the military, you like a challenge. There's no way you, you enter the military without wanting to have a challenge. And that must be very difficult to have that taken away. So what a cool thing that you have the ability to be able to do this. Yes, How can we help so that we can, um, you know, does the wounded warrior project help you with costs and stuff to do that? Or, you know, how can we help as, you know, citizens? They, they, Wounded Warrior Project does help with the costs of some of the travel and some of the events that do there, but a lot of times they help a lot with outreach, just getting to connect with other vets, other, other people who would share the same mentality, same, same disabilities. Uh, another nonprofit I'm involved with that here locally is a equine therapy farm that helps veterans and children, and that's been another great way for me to be involved and help more and just be active more. Um, but the best thing that you can do is just listen. Just listen. Okay. Say, hey, you know what? I want to hear a story. Tell me a story. Tell me what, what I could do to help you. That's the best of us. Just listen. Good to know. And you, that's good to know. Um, you raise money, speaking of other charities, you raise money during the Boston Marathon for something that is, is also impacting your family. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, my Actually, my slot for the Boston Marathon was, uh, I was just shot of the qualifying time for this race. I wound up qualifying this time, but uh, I was involved with um, the National Braille Press. Um, they print children's books in, in Braille. They were the first people to print the Harry Potter series in Braille. Oh, my, my daughter, One of my daughters is visually impaired. She had a um, few genetic conditions that really her with a uh, small eyes called microphthalmia that caused her to be illegally blind. And she's learning how to read Braille in school and learning how to navigate with the cane, navigate with the aids that she, that she, that she needs. My initial Braille press I said, hey, you know, we have slots for the marathon. If you want, if you would raise money, money for us, you can, you can participate, run, cycle, push, if you want, if you want to run the marathon for us. So jumped on that and we really wound up setting the, uh, the, my team was able to set the fundraising record for, for the marathon. So we have more slots next year. So, oh, and how much did you raise? Um, individually, I raised 35,000. Wow. Oh, incredible. 
as a team, I think we were just shy, or I think as a team, we broke 50,000. So that was, oh my big, goodness. That's amazing. Brown to pains the children who can really benefit really see the world that they couldn't otherwise see. And how old is your daughter or your daughters, but how's it, you know, how old are they? They just had the sixth fourth day on Saturday. So. All right. So that, yeah, so while, you know, that's about the time everyone is starting to read. So you really, for her, this is a, you know, just a, a, a the time that she should be learning to read. She's just learning to read in a different way, correct? Yes, ma'am. And she's, and she's uh, really, really impressing all of us with her ability to, uh, just to not only identify Braille, but to just explore the world, how she, how she can. And it's just, it's amazing to see her adapt and overcome everything. That's beautiful. Wow, what a great story. Did she uh, did she ever get to see you ride? Even if it's not in a race, does she get to see you? She has seen me um around the neighborhood a few times. Yeah. I'm usually ride I usually end up going to the park after I drop them off at school. So really not because they get they get to go school so early and then by the time they get out of school it's usually way too hot to ride. But uh um we're we're working on that. Hopefully to get them out to a race if they're in Disney or Boston or sometime down the line for sure. What an incredible gift you're giving them just by doing it so they can watch it because, you know, your kids end up doing what you do, not what you say. <laughs> I've learned that. <laughs> um, and you being active and not giving up after all that you've been through, what a great lesson they have and a great example. So good on you. Thank you. I, I, I try. Some days are better than others, but <laughs> that's, I think we that's... didn't ask you to be perfect. Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> perfect, right? <laughs> so what was right. the most, um, you know, the biggest obstacle to getting to the Boston Marathon? Like all the training, what was, what was the biggest obstacle that you had? Um, honestly, the, the shipping and the bike was probably the biggest obstacle. Having to buy the case, having the case built to, to ship it safely, to, um, to trust things that, we're out of my control. It's really I'm saying, all right, well, say you're gonna get there in one piece, well, let's get there. And then um this that was probably the worst of it. The uh, support I got for fundraising was incredible. The support I got for training was great too. So just that was the biggest um biggest issue is just shipping, but it wound up working out fine. Tell me about this outfit. Uh, so <laughs> so yeah, I we we had a we had the jersey for the um, for the team, and it had our names in braille on the back. It was pretty cool. Oh, neat! And I figured, you know, why? You know, it's, it's gonna be. It was chilly. It was cold when I started the race. It was at um, at six a.m. It was maybe like in the forties. So I had my my long tights on and uh, the long sleeve shirt. Then in the after, by the time the race ended, it was probably up in the seventies. People were saying, "Oh, how, how hot it was!" I'm thinking, oh, pfft. It's nothing, but, uh, yeah. but it was just, um, you know, I figure be a little flamboyant, be a little flashy, let people see you, draw attention. So kind of just have fun with it all. They are bright. Now when it warms up, will you, will you, do you have a certain schedule that you follow? Do you do a certain number of days a week or do you just try to get out there when you can? Uh, honestly, the only thing that's pretty much set is my time at the gym and then I'll ride when I can. And if I have extra times with it, I know next week, uh, my trainer is going to actually be, going to be on vacation. So I get to go out, do a couple of days in the park, riding, do a good day, um, shoot an archery to get ready for the wheelchair game. So we'll just, uh, and, when and what's the longest ride that you do before you do a marathon? Um, well, the longest ride I've, I've ever been able to get done in a day was, uh, about, was about 40 miles. And that was only because I had to cut that short because I had to be home. For pick up for the kids. But, uh, <laughs> Did you say 40 um, or 14? 40. 40. 40. Yes, wow. Yes, so you were quite ready for 26. I mean, you might not have been ready for the heel, hills. Yeah, but the, that's a long time 40, on it for about those how, arms. About how long does that take? Oh, uh, that took me a little more than four hours. Okay. But so it was. What was your time for Boston? I was at. Um, one hour and or you need, 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 we have to look it up now. Yeah, <laughs> the because uh, I mean that I feel like that's pretty that's fast. Hard. It, it's pretty it's fast, fast yeah. going up and down those hills. 
My the, arms the get tired. I mean, they're making me feel really yeah. weak. My arms get tired quickly. I'm like, I don't know how he does that. That's crazy. My, my time for Boston was one hour, 54 minutes and 47 seconds. Excellent. And that was a qualifying time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, two hours and below is, is qualifying for the marathon. Wow. On a hard course. Good for you. Yeah. It, was, it was a fast course though, so it was great. But a lot of fun. Is that the yeah. fastest? Have you done the marathon distance before? I know you've done multiple day events, but... Yes, Sam. I've done uh, I've done uh, the Walt Disney World Marathon twice, and both of those were two hours. One was two hours and twenty minutes. One was two hours and four minutes. So it was my fastest time. Yes, and that's hard. That's harder because you don't have the momentum of going downhill, right? That's you're right. you're just cranking the whole time. Yes. Wow. And that's a busy like the the Disney races are really busy. How do you navigate all those people? Yeah, a similar similar situation where we get about a two minute head start over the runners, but uh, okay. Yeah, you can't just yell "get out of my way" because that's what I would do. <laughs> I, yes, I mean, you, you can't. It's it's helps us a little bit political. On your left, on your left. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people don't really pay attention to that, or they have the headphones in. So oh yeah. Bob and they- we. Yeah, I can see that. Yet another reason why we tell people to make sure you're, if if you have headphones, either just use the one or ones that, because you need to be able to hear. You might not realize there's a hand cyclist coming at you from behind that needs to go around you. Yes. Well, Mark told us he's going to do MCM marathon, which I believe is the 49th running actually. So um, so. that's a cool year to do it. Um, And another hard, but I guess now fast course, because it's really hilly. Yes, I, I'm excited to uh, get to finish the race at, at, at the front gates of Arlington Cemetery. So hoping to uh, give my medals to the uh, to my brothers who are up up uh, in the ground there. Yeah. So see them at least before or after the race. Oh wow! How how neat! Yeah. So I have another question about it. So the way the bike is set up, and you said it's hard to turn. Have you ever? fallen i mean is it does it does it tip over i mean i know that sometimes the, the push car the push uh, cycles do uh, yes ma'am actually <laughs> my my first first marathon disney i uh coming out of animal kingdom i uh, was a nice downhill i got some great speed but then there was our sharp char there's our sharp left turn that i kind of went off the road a little bit and flipped the bike <laughs> and uh almost wound up falling off of the bike wow. uh, and had to get right it had to get Resituated back in the, in the saddle, and then uh, it was delayed for a little bit because the medical had to check me out, make sure didn't break any bones, and then I was off to finish, finish the race. So it was crazy! Little, Does somebody have to fun. go with you in case that happens, or you just yeah. have to, what happens if that happens? Oh, by a cell phone reception if I can't get out myself. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. Just, uh, that's scary. Just, yeah, you get used to it. It's, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's what it's what you've trained for, right? Right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's amazing. The uh, uh, I was thinking that you know, I with it being so low to the ground, I was hoping that what you're going to say is no, it's very steady, and you never would fall off. But I guess that's that's not going to be the case. Well, it certainly it, pr- it, puts it into perspective when we fall too. It's true. <laughs> yes, not a big deal when we do it, but that's a that's a huge thing if they fall. It, it, it is steady, but someone told me if you don't flip your bike at least three times, you're not really a cyclist. So. Okay, well, so how many times so. are we just at one for you? Do we do we have two more or? Oh, I, 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 I've, I've crushed it enough times to qualify. Okay, so good. <laughs> we, so. Well, you don't have to do it oh, anymore. We're a hard or a helmet at least, so it's good. Yes, yes. The helmet and the and the shades. I like the, I like the shades. Yes, ma'am. The um. So, what do you when people see the the wheelchair and the, and the hand cycles race racers, what do you hope that, that a, a spectator um, feels about that? What would you, what do you hope that they know? I hope they can see that how, what our abilities are, despite our, our disabilities that we are, you know, we're not just a charity case, we're not just somebody who needs help. Some people, we can, we're, in, we're as independent as we can be. We are as independent as other people. Just, it just looks a bit different. That's 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 our main goal. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, the fact that anybody can move forward for twenty six point two miles is, and for you, some forty miles. I mean, that is that takes 
effort and training and and dedication. And that doesn't matter what kind of ability you are. That took a lot of effort from someone. Yes, ma'am, for sure. Well, it's inspiring to me to uh, be grateful for everything that I have and also to, um, you know, not give up because you had choices to give up and we really appreciate that you didn't. So um, that's a, that's very inspirational. Thank you. That's all right. Maria, you ready for your coach's drill? Yeah. I'm going to try to do coach's drill without crying now. So uh... get, I, I have faith in you. It's one minute. All right. So Maria gets to talk about anything she wants for a minute. And this is her drill today. And it's going to be a quick one because I can't talk about this without crying. So I will tell you to support your veterans because they give a lot to our country and they give us freedom and they give up a lot of their life to help our country. So please help them. Please support them. Find something you can do uh, to be help helpful. So I'm going to end it there before I cry. So okay. yay. Because <laughs> you, you, yeah, you're heading into a, a mili- a, a, being a military family. So I know that this is all very, very special yeah. to you, Maria. It sure is. Yeah. So thank you for your service. And thank you for telling your story because there's a lot of veterans that still struggle mm-hmm. and um, we don't give them enough attention. So I, I hope that they can hear your story and that other people can hear your story and we can help. Yes, ma'am. I, I hope so too. Thank you. Maybe switch switch the uh, the the addiction into something a little bit more uh, uh, more uh, healthy for you and your life and your family's life. I mean, imagine how much better your family is going to be over the next you know decades because of it. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank I, you. I, I tell a story. My my dog used to follow me around, around from a whiskey glass, trying to stick a finger into it. Now my son follows me around, trying to say. Hey, that effects, that effects, that effects. Oh, that's, and that's awesome. A much better transfer. Very good. Because because you you stopped drinking around the time that your your son was was born. And how old is he now? Yes, ma'am. He is now two and a half. Okay. Well, we've... And I'm sure your wife is thankful too. I, I'm sure that changed a lot for you too as well. So yes, ma'am. that's awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. And I'm so glad that you, you contacted me and that we met 2018 and that uh, what all you know? What you're able to, what you're able to do, and what you're able to tell, and what you're able to experience. It, it's beautiful, and I'm glad we get to share it with more people. Yes, and come back. You'll have to come back on and talk to us about Marine Corps. Yes, yeah. I'll, I'll love to hear that. So I'm happy to, happy to. All right, good luck. All right, out and there, good Mark. luck. No more good falling. luck in all that humid training. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Have a great one. Enjoy.